Hi everybody, this is uh, my first in a few videos that I want to do. I have this idea, and I know a lot of people do like Q&A videos, but I would like to do some videos which are specifically catered towards like one topic that uh, one of my subscribers, or one of the random passers-by that happens to come across one of my videos, come across one of my videos, really Mike, come across one of my videos, ugh, sorry. Um, <laughs> this, this went south quickly. Another innuendo. So what I want to do is I want to do these videos where I'm going to answer certain topics or talk about certain things. So if you guys have any video uh, topics that you would like me to discuss, anything at all, it can be something completely random, it can be something political, it can be something about films, about, you know, it can be anything uh, you could possibly think about, then just leave a comment or PM it to me and I will then go and make a video about that um, about that topic so again it's not like a Q&A thing where like I'll do a video answering loads of questions I will do one of them at some point but it's more so just me addressing one topic that you personally would like me to to discuss so anyway Squirrely Boy who is uh, one of my long-term subscribers uh, always really contributing to the channel I uh, really appreciate that and always uh, commenting asked uh, a couple of times what I thought about Scottish independence and it's a topic that I probably will make more videos on as the uh, political parties really geared up for the, the debates over this. And the reason that it's a big topic at the moment is there is going to be a referendum about uh, Scotland breaking away from the United Kingdom. Now if you don't know, if you're not aware, the United Kingdom comprises uh, Scotland, England, Wales, uh, Northern Ireland and a few other small islands. And it's not really one country per se. We're a union of countries. We all have our own distinct identities, but we also have a shared cultural heritage of something that we call being British. And there has always been maybe about, I would say probably about 20% of the population in Scotland who have always wanted to break away from that. And one of the reasons is that, um, I think it was in 1707 when we had the Union of the Crowns, uh, where Scotland and England united together um, to, to start the United Kingdom, that it was really done without consulting the people. So there's always been that train of thought, which is that, well, we weren't consulted in the first place, so it shouldn't really be there. There are also people who believe that Scotland should be independent, should be its own country, because they believe that we have our own distinct, specific uh, culture, and that we would actually be better off economically, um, that we have our own... Uh, political ideologies here which differ from down in England and Wales and Northern Ireland and that we would essentially be better off managing all of our own affairs. Now one of the things that was brought along to try and appease those people was devolution. I think it was, uh, God I can't remember what year devolution came in now, it wasn't 1997 but um, it wasn't long after and um, that basically gave Scotland their own parliament. We, we were allowed their own parliament. We were uh, given our own elections to elect, rather than electing representatives for the British parliament specifically, we were allowed to elect representatives for uh, our, our sort of areas, our constituencies for the Scottish parliament. And they had, they were given powers, but not uh, not full powers, not what people would call Devo Max, we don't have the ability to raise our own taxes and things like that. But we do have our own ability now to uh, govern ourselves to a degree. And Scotland's always remained separate in some ways, you know, we've got our own legal system, we've got our own education system. And this debate has been growing for quite a while now. And really a, a couple of years ago what happened was that the SNP, which is the Nationalist Party in Scotland, that wants independence um, that has been campaigning for independence for, for decades it actually finally became the ruling party in Scotland in the Scottish Parliament uh, we ha have been primarily a left socialist country in a lot of ways and we always tended to vote in Labour but after the Iraq war a lot of people in Scotland I would say most 
we're absolutely against the Iraq, the Iraq war um, and we're against um, a lot of the things that Labour were doing so a lot of us didn't really or a lot of people in Scotland didn't really trust or don't really trust Labour anymore so the SNP get voted in. Now on the face of it in the last elections it was a landslide on the face of it you'd think well that must mean that there's going to be independence then if, if the Scottish National Party had been voted in. Well, not really. We don't have the the legal processes are not in place for there to be a referendum and for there to actually be um, a, a splitting away from the union. We don't have that. That's not in place at the moment. That would have to be put in place first before anything could actually happen. Um, so the SNP have to operate within the system that they actually have, we have at the moment. The funny thing about the SNP is that they've actually done a pretty good job in a lot of places, in a lot of ways, but in my opinion, uh, the sticking point is this nationalistic sentiment. Now, I, I maybe have, I'm getting the crux of the matter about whether I believe in Scottish independence. I only believe in Scottish independence um, as a last resort. It would have to be something that, you know, I think if you're going to break away from a country, you have to have a valid reason for it. Now, one reason can be lack of representation, that you're not represented properly. And that's not really the case here, is it? Because Scottish people are represented not just in the British Parliament, but we're also represented in the Scottish Parliament. In fact, there's an argument now to be made, and, and I actually agree with this, that uh, people in England and Wales are not represented enough in Northern Ireland as well. I keep saying Northern Ireland as if it's a separate thing, but you know, it's just, it's not mainland Britain, but it's just as much the United Kingdom as, as we are. Um, but, you know, if you have a lack of representation, if you're not being represented politically, then there's an argument to be made that you want to break off and form your own political parties and form your own country. That's in your own sovereign state. That's absolutely fine. However, that argument doesn't really stand here because we have representation. Also, um, if there's an inequality of treatment, if we're treated badly, treated poorly, treated differently from the other parts of the country, Again, that's just not the case. Uh, we're treated fairly, we're treated equally. Uh, so I, I, again, there's no argument from that perspective. So you then have to start to think about you know, why would we want independence. And I'm really, you know, I, I, I mean, I maybe shouldn't use the word unionist, but I'm certainly for the United Kingdom. I think that there's a shared heritage there. I think there's a shared collection of values and beliefs that that the countries have uh, fought through a lot of things together. That uh, we share more similarities and differences, and I think because of that, we should stay together and we should unite together and just try to make Britain better. I think uh, there are a lot of problems with Britain at the moment, but I think that it's it's not a case of abandoning it. It's a case of just trying to fix it, make it slightly better. Like I say, I believe that in England they should have a parliament, Wales should have a parliament, Northern Ireland should have a parliament, Scotland should have a parliament, and we should all really deal with most of our own internal affairs, but we should have a British parliament to deal with, you know, defence and things like that. And maybe the NHS and um, the welfare system, stuff that um, really affects everybody across the board. But... I don't really think that there's a valid argument for Scottish independence uh, at the moment. Certainly, one of the arguments used to be made was that economically Scotland would be stronger in, on its own. Um, there's this thing where people seem to believe that we've got all this oil, we've got North Sea oil. Well, we do have some of it, but that's, that's going to run out. Um, and I think that we don't really have the resources to do a quick turnaround so if we were to become a, a strong economic country then that would probably take about 20 years so we might have to go through a lot of hardship before we get there one of the arguments was that oh look at ireland look at the scandinavian countries well yeah let's look at them when the financial crisis hit these are the places that really struggled and i think scotland would have struggled likewise um and because we were part of the United Kingdom, because we were together, I think we managed to uh, ride the storm a little bit easier than a lot of other countries did. I think independently of one another, 
we probably wouldn't have been able to do that. Um, so I, and especially now, the idea of being independent right now, even if you're pro-independence, you've got to look at it logically and think, really we shouldn't be breaking away now, there's too much economic uncertainty. If we break away now, um, things could go really badly. I mean, people in Scotland could become really poor, and I think that's uh, demonstrable. So, from that point of view, even if you believe in, in independence, I don't think it's a, it's a good idea at the moment. But even in the, even the long term, you know, I, I what does it say about Scotland if we were like, even even if it was going to be better for us, if it was going to be better for us economically, what does it say about Scotland if we say, well, we're abandoning you, we're not going to help make things better for all of us, we are going to just break off and make things better for ourselves. What does that say about us? I don't think that says an awful lot. Um, you know what happens? What happened to fellowship? You know, I think that that's a, a really important trait. Um, and yeah, so the the biggest problem I have with the SNP and for a lot of people, not all, but a lot of people who argue for independence is that I think there is a there there is an element of xenophobia in it and you know I'm a very very wary of any sort of nationalistic sentiment um, I, I consider myself someone who I don't know if the, the right term civic nationalist I'm not sure but someone who doesn't believe in waving a, waving a flag really and saying oh look at our country it's fantastic but just trying to better things for all of us or for, for everybody around us and not really worrying about cultural differences and things like that but I think there is unfortunately an element of people in Scotland who have anti-English sentiment blaming everything on England because England has more money has a much bigger population we're always any decisions that are made it's their fault I think a lot of that comes from the fact that we had you know 15 years of a, a conservative government and up here we are quite socialist and that was hard going we felt that we were being ruled by people who didn't care about us, they didn't really didn't give a shit about the Scottish people because they knew, you know, rightly or wrongly, no matter what policies they put in, we wouldn't vote for the Conservatives, we would just vote uh, Labour or vote Socialist. So, that's the one argument I would make for independence, although like I say, I'm not for it, I really believe in um, the United Kingdom. The one argument is that we, as a country, have a different ideological perspective and because of that, are we always going to be affected by people in, in England who are very anti-socialist? In places, by the north of England, there's a, there are a lot of people who are pro-socialist or pro-left wing, but in the, the, the heartland of England where, where the economic strength comes from, which is London and the surrounding areas, a lot of people are pro-conservative are we always going to be affected by that? And that would be one logical reason to argue and say, well, we should have independence so that we're not affected by that, so that we rule our own destiny. My solution to that is that we have Devo Max, we have parliaments for all the composite parts of the United Kingdom, and we have a British parliament that just deals with British issues. Um, and I would even go as far as to say that in some cases, maybe even two parliaments in Britain, to even make a case for three, I know that sounds a bit crazy, but you know, people in the North, uh, sorry, in England, people in the north of England really have their own identity in a lot of ways. And then you have people in the sort of middle and south of England. But you also have, like, down in Cornwall, um, many of them don't even consider themselves English. They consider themselves Cornish or Celtic, much like people from Wales and Scotland and, and Ireland and Northern Ireland. So you can make a uh, an argument for the, the 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 need for more than one um, parliament in England, and it's not just cultural differences that I think would facilitate that. It's really just that look, the North of England, just as Scotland and Wales face different different challenges, the North of England faces different challenges from London and the surrounding areas because that's where the money is. We don't have the money in our areas, we're not economically strong, so we face different... Now, that's not like a jealous sort of goddamn London. London's a wonderful city, I've been there many times. But it just means that we face different issues. So we have to... I really believe in local government. I think people on the ground seeing what's going wrong and fixing it, that's what's important. Anyway, so 
in conclusion, Scrolly Boy, I am not for Scottish independence. I would only ever be for Scottish independence if um, we were somehow oppressed or, um, you know, we, we were not given a voice. And I think we've been given a voice. I would like Devo Max so that Scotland can raise its own tax taxes and uh, decide exactly where to spend it. Because I think one thing, that would shut up a lot of people who seem to think that it's all England's fault. Um, because they would realise that, no, it's, it's, it's really, a lot of this stuff's our fault, you know, we've not ran the place properly. And if we had, if we were in charge of most things, they would see that, you know, what we need is a new class of politician, not deconstructing the entire union. So anyway, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Do you have any opinion on it? Do you have any p opinion on Scottish independence or independence of, of the other parts of, of of the country and I know there are, there are a lot of people who are English as well who want English independence it's not like get away from England there are a lot of people in England who say they just want England to be on its own so you know I would like to hear everybody's thoughts what you think about it and as always let's try and stay civil people so thanks again if you have any questions or suggestions for videos let me know and I will mention you in the video and thank you greatly anyway I'm going to go now because this light is killing my eyes I'm light and tolerant I get migraines. Boo-hoo. Goodbye.